Hey folks, it's finally here, the big 5-0, my 50th narrated Wi-Fi battle, and what a doozy this one is. It's against uh, Kuzo from my coke of the Underdog Bros, um, and I'm using my new Jane team, uh, which I designed kind of based on their principles of, you know, creativity, trumping, just using powerful Pokemon. Um, so anyway, I start off with um, my standard uh, lead and end up deciding that that's not the way to go. Uh, he does some switching too. Um, and he gets the first attack in with uh, Sharpedo using Screech. Uh, not a move I was particularly expecting, especially since Screech has kind of not that good accuracy, but works for me, I guess. Uh, anyway, I lead off the battle with a Rock Slide, which does a huge amount of damage to Sharpedo, um, and uh, does a fair amount of damage to Ursaring. Ursaring gets um, poisoned with its Toxic Orb, um, so you know it's going to be using facade or something like that. Anyway, I decided to switch out went with the defense drop. Um, I didn't think I could take whatever um, my opponent was dishing out, uh, so I instead send out um, my uh, Tom, my Licky Licky, uh, to just take that hit. I mean, Licky Licky can take anything. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. So uh, Emily goes ahead and uses Icy Wind to cut their speed since they're both uh, running fairly fast. I get a crit against Sharpedo, which, you know, probably considering the attack is, you know, resisted and doesn't have that high power, um, probably that was, um, that crit was needed to KO Sharpedo. But then again, maybe not because Sharpedo has awful, awful defenses. Um, so anyway, he sends out Quagsire and I do some switching of my own, um, pulling back Emily for um, for uh, my Seafro and my Soul Rock again. Um, Ursa Ring goes ahead and uses Gunk Shot, um, which uh, is resisted by Seafro, which is nice. I wasn't expecting Gunk Shot, of course. I mean, who would expect Gunk Shot? But anyway, Tom uses Power Up to um, kill that Quagsire, but it misses. So, too bad there. Uh, and he gets in an Iron uh, Tail, or an Iron something, uh, which lowers my defenses. Um, Ursa Ring is racking up the damage due to poison, uh, and so uh, Seafra's Rock Slide is going to kill it. Um, isn't going to do too much against Quagsire, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, Ursa Ring is down, slowly. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and uh, Seafra's racking up the Life Orb damage. Uh, Tom uses Power Whip, and this time it hits, and it uh, KOs Quagsire since it's a 4x effective hit. Um, yeah. Power Whip is an attack that I would I would imagine that not many people are would be expecting on uh, Licky Licky, um, although it is one of its more powerful attacks. Um, but yeah, so that was fun. Anyway, I pull back Tom um, since he's got an Infernape out, and that's not good for me. And I send out Emily, thinking that it's going to use close combat on me. Instead, it uses Vacuum Wave, um, which I guess is a priority move. Um, which, you know, does a little bit of damage, but not enough to KO anyone. Seifer goes ahead and explodes, um, which is going to take out both of his guys, um, but since uh, Emily is a ghost, it isn't going to do em anything to her. Um, so, yeah, it takes out uh, Infernape, uh, Emily is not affected, and Vile Plume is completely taken out, and now he's down to his last Pokémon, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, this battle has gone really quickly. Um, even taking into account that I've edited out all the selection screens and everything. Um, so he sends out his last Pokemon, which is Blastoise, and he realizes he can't really do anything to me. Um, so uh, he goes ahead and concedes the match. Um, so he said that, so basically uh, he then PM'd me and I was like, no, no, we gotta do that again. This wasn't one of my better teams. We totally need to do this again. So I'm like, okay, sounds good to me. Who am I to turn down a battle with the underdog bros? And so, um, here we go again. Um, he's using a different battle pass, uh, and I see, damn, three ghosts. So, you know, obviously he saw that explosion and didn't want to get caught with his pants down again um, when an explosion hits. So, um, I, I'm thinking, you know, I mean, obviously explosion wasn't, you know, key to my victory, but it was, it did help me a lot, so. This time I won't be able to explode as much. So I use a different lead combination this time around. Um, I have Aramaki, my um, Mr. Mime, go ahead and roleplay uh, Angler to get uh, the Volt Absorbability. Um, and yeah. 
on Angler, and of, and of course, you know, why use Volt uh, why get Volt Absorb if I'm not going to use Discharge, so I'm going to go ahead and use Discharge against this Pokemon. Um, so, yeah, uh, th this battle is kind of laggy. Um, anyway, Aramaki uses Roll Play, as I said, um, and it goes off without a hitch. Uh, and then Angler uses Discharge, slowly. Um, <clears throat> And, you know, as you're about to see, it doesn't do too much damage against his guys, um, which is, you know, kind of expected. Although I do get the Parahax on both of them, which I'm like, all right, that's sweet. Uh, and, in fact, I get the Parahax in terms of he doesn't move, but then he uses Trick Room, so that Parahax is actually going to work against me this time. Um, but, oh well. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and have Aramaki use Teeter Dance to confuse his guys. Of course, forgetting that, of course, Spinda has Teeter Dance. I mean, uh, has own tempo. I mean, uh, that's one of the you know, most significant uh, own tempo uh, Pokemon out there. Uh, so I go ahead and send out uh, Tom, though. Tom has own tempo, too, so uh, really no one's getting confused today. Um, yeah, he goes ahead and uses Flatter, and this is when I realized how stupid my move was. It's like, oh yeah, of course. Um, uh, own tempo for... So he gets paralyzed, so I get really lucky there. Um, you know, you could argue this was kind of a ha uh, hacksy battle. You know, there are lots. Of, there's lots of hacks going on, but you know, you'll he's, a lot of them didn't really matter. Um, so I go ahead and switch out Aramaki because in the you know our, he's my one of my fastest Pokemon, if not my fastest, and so really not a good idea to have him in the trick room. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and focus blast against um, uh, his Spinda to take it out. Uh, so I go ahead and send Lantern back out, um, Sableye is confused, and I get the hacks there, it hits itself, um, and Spinda Baton passes its way out of there, so I'm like, ah, oh, man, um, but you know, these things happen, uh, and I just know that he's going to send in a ghost to totally ruin my Focus Blast, um, and indeed he sends out Spiritomb, who, you know, Spiritomb has no weaknesses and is pretty much impossible to kill. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use Surf um, and switch in uh, Nessie, my uh, Lapras, who's going to uh, water absorb the Surf, uh, and I'm going to be able to have it use Perish Song to try to get rid of that, um, to try to get rid of uh, his Pokemon, to try to scare them out, um, because, you know, it's already at, what, plus two special attack? And now here, yeah, he uses Nasty Plot, and so now he's at plus four special attack. Um, and, you know, he's going to hit, that Spirit Tomb is going to hit really, really hard. So I cannot say that I'm happy about that. Um, so here comes the Surf. Uh, does a fair amount of damage, considering that, uh, you know, Lantern doesn't have the highest of, of attack uh, stats. But, you know, I just keep using Surf, and it's doing a fair amount of damage. So you now here comes the Parish Song. Dark Pulse goes... And he, now he gets a crit that that had to have mattered. Even a plus four, Lantern is a special wall. Um, you'll see a little later. You know, Lantern I'm pretty sure has the highest special defense in of all of my Pokemon. Uh, and for it to have one hit KO, that that must have mattered. Oh, so now he's used um, uh, Psych uh, Psych up to get the plus four on Thanet too. So I'm really afraid here. Luckily, the Trick Room goes down. Um, so there's at least that, um, but I, you know, I've got to take these Pokemon out before they slaughter me. Uh, so Emily is going to be weak against, uh, a dark, you know, a dark pulse from Spiritomb, but I should at least be able to take out the net. Uh, Emily is pretty darn fast, um, so there's that. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and use Blizzard, uh, with Nessie, my Lapras, um, with, yeah, just, you know, to rack up the damage. So Shadow Ball is, in fact, a one-hit KO. I was, I was surprised he didn't switch out, but, you know, I figure, I guess he figured, you know, he's got that much boosted attack, you know, it would be a shame to waste by switching out, and you can do a lot of damage in three turns, um, as you're about to see. So Spirit Tomb goes ahead and uses Dark Pulse and takes out the second, uh, his second guy, um, so that's now two one-hit KOs for him, and that guy is just ripping, ripping through my team, and this is not going good. Um, Parish Count has fallen to two, so that's two turn, uh, turns left of the slaughter, um, and I go ahead and send Sifra, my uh, Soul Rock, back out. If anyone cares, Sifra is a reference to Gene Roddenberry's Andromeda, which is kind of the worst sci-fi show I've ever seen. That's not fair, there are a lot of really bad sci-fi shows out there, but... 
Um, Andromeda was a pretty bad show, especially in the later seasons. Um, anyway, enough about uh, ancient sci-fi shows. Um, Seifert goes ahead and uses Rock Slide, and I'm hoping, hoping for the flinch hacks, because that's the only way anyone's going to be able to survive Spiritomb's onslaught. Um, uh, Nessie goes ahead and uses Blizzard, so who knows, maybe I'll get some freeze hacks. Um, you know, it's slowly chipping away at these boulders, and I do get the freeze hacks. Hypno gets frozen, but he gets some hacks too. Uh, you know, there's a 1 in 5 chance at, a, at each turn that you're going to defrost, and he defrosted on the first turn. So, he sucks. But anyway, he uses Dark Pulse, and Nessie survives, um, which, you know, that is confirmation for me that, uh, th that crit did matter against my Lantern. Um, so, yeah, uh, because Nessie has, does not have as high, um, defenses as, uh, Lantern. Uh, so anyway, I go ahead and do another Rock Slide. Um, hopefully I'll be able to take someone out, uh, and I'm switching out Nessie here because no sense in letting her die from the Parish Song as well. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of praying that he doesn't switch out, um, his Pokémon here, um, because I'm pretty sure I'll be able to kill it, or because all well, the Parish Song is ending, um, but then again, if Spiritomb does, uh, switch out, or Spiritomb did switch out since you can obviously he didn't, then, you know, he's lost all of his boosts. Um, but Spiritomb survives with just a little bit of HP, which is enough to KO Seifra, so that's half my team KO'd by that one little Pokemon. Ah, oh. um, that was an extremely, extremely effective setup, and I am so glad that it's finally dead. That thing finally, finally died. Um, Parasong did its, uh, did its thing, although that took way too long. Yeah, uh, what I, I mean, the Parish song thing was the first uh, thing that I came up with on this team, um, but it really isn't that effective because th a lot can happen in three turns. Um, you know, unless you have a heavy duty stall team um, with plenty of switches on your side, there's not really much that's going to help you there. So anyway, I go ahead and use Signal Beam against Slowking, uh, which is going to be a super effective hit, and I'm, figu I'm figuring he's not going to expect a uh, Signal Beam because, you know, who expects a signal beam uh, on, a, on a, a Mr. Mime? Um, so anyway, there goes the signal beam, and who knows, maybe I'll get confused hacks, although it probably has its own tempo, so I doubt it'll get confused. But anyway, here comes the power whip, and it is a crit, but uh, the calculations lead me to believe that the crit may or may not have mattered depending on his special defense and HP investments, and also natures and stuff. Uh, so anyway, he was probably going to flatter Slowking, uh, and so instead he flatters Aramaki and gets the special attack boost. Um, so, uh, and he sends out his last Pokemon, Spinda. So now I consider what to do. I consider withdrawing uh, Aramaki since, you know, the, it is confused, but I figure, you know, the plus two boost is too good to pass up. Uh, let's do some damage. Um, and uh, Tom is going to go ahead and attack as well. Um, with Focus Blast, I would want to KO that Spinda. Um, yeah, I, don't, I obviously wouldn't be targeting Sableye since it's a ghost. Um, but so here we go. Spinda goes first with a Fake Out, um, <laughs> teeters along, uh, and yeah, does. Uh, I mean, it gets its flinch, so good for him. Uh, Focus Blast actually lands this time, and it's another crit. This one I'm almost positive did not matter. Um, you know, I'm getting a lot of crits, but they, they're they not really mattering for the most part. Um, I mean, maybe it mattered, but uh, I very, very much doubt it. So anyway, here's a little power gem. <laughs> Tom just, it looks like it's tickling him more than anything else. So now he's down to his last Pokemon, and I've got a lot of my team, so he goes ahead and resigns. So I've beaten the underdog bros, who are kind of like my role models. They're pretty amazing, and so I'm pretty happy. Yeah, it was an amazing battle. Good game.